asked by the International Society of Tropical Foresters to tell them the history and some of the accomplishments of the Tropical Forest Foundation. It's a pleasure for me to do this since I was involved with uh, Tropical Forest Foundation or TFF since its inception. <clears throat> Back in the decade of the 80s, especially the late 80s, there was a very rigid campaign uh, to ban imported tropical hardwoods. There was a, a lot of concern about the disappearing tropical rainforest. There were major magazine articles, Time Magazine, National Geographic had front page uh, pictures and stories of the dis disappearing rainforest. And this led to legislation to ban imported tropical hardwoods, to ban the trade and all of those products. And I was involved at the time in the trade association called the International Hardwood Products Association. And this uh, was a thing of great concern to them for more than one reason. Uh, it affects their, would, would affect their livelihood. And also, uh, knowing enough about tropical forestry to know uh, in the circumstance where these forests are, the timber industry isn't necessarily the leading cause for the disappearing rainforest. But there needed to be some uh, uh, more scientific and uh, knowledgeable uh, information available on that subject. So I was asked by the association to find a noted individual, qualified individual uh, from the scientific academic community that would write a white paper that would address this topic. So uh, a couple of people were recommended and we ended up choosing Dr. Thomas Lovejoy who was an officer at the Smithsonian Institution uh, at that time. Very knowledgeable, and uh, had been an, uh, a top official at the World Wildlife Fund uh, and very uh, and a very broad background uh, in uh, biology, botany, ecology, and ecology. So I approached Dr. Lovejoy and asked him uh, if he'd be willing to write the paper and he, his response was, he said, well, I think it needs to be done. But he says, I don't think I'm qualified, and I'm not sure I know who is qualified to do it. But he said, I think uh, if, you, if your association can help sponsor it, uh, the, the cost of putting it together, I think it would be very helpful to pull together a group of the world's leading scientists uh, and, and a balanced group this, uh, from, from the scientific community, the non-governmental organization, NGO community, and industry. And I would be willing to chair it and host it here at the Smithsonian. And let's, let's see if we can't analyze the subject and come out with some accurate information. Well, that was done. Uh, he hosted the workshop. And uh, Dr. Lovejoy's, Tom Lovejoy's challenge to the group going in he says, I know we have different ones have different opinions, and there's going to be dialogue and debate. But he said, as chairman, I'm giving you the challenge. We're not going to leave this workshop. It's lasting several days. We're not going to leave until we can come to a consensus and develop a consensus statement that we all agree is the proper approach. And so that did lead to elaborate discussion and debate. Sometimes it was contentious. And it led to the publication of a paper called uh, Tropical Forestry Workshop, Consensus Statement on Commercial Forestry, Sustained Yield Management, and Tropical Forestry. <clears throat> well, the white paper was well received. I think I mentioned that there had been a number of bills introduced before Congress uh, to ban the, the trade in tropical hardwoods. <clears throat> One of the lead pieces of legislation was sponsored by Senator Al Gore. And Al, Senator Gore and Lovejoy uh, were colleagues and friends. So when this white paper was published, we took it to Senator Gore. And he was a little shocked uh, that uh, at, the, at the outcome, he says, and Tom Lovejoy signed off on this. And we said, well, yes, he did. He led the workshop, and this is, uh, this is the group. So without much uh, attention or fanfare, the legislation quietly went away. <laughs> uh, and that, that was very helpful. But then, okay, so we've solved that issue. 
But then the question is, what should we do as the trade, as the industry? And so it was decided that it would be well if we could start a nonprofit, it's called a 501c3 exemption in the government, a nonprofit organization to address the issue and to educate the public on the importance of sustainable forestry. And that led to the, foundation, to the forming of the Tropical Forest Foundation. It was formed in the spring of 1990. Uh, Dr. Lovejoy was the founding chairman, and I had the pleasure of serving as executive director during its entire, uh, uh, entire life, or at least for the, for the next 20 some years. <clears throat> and TFF, uh, as it was known, uh, started out with doing educational programs and there were workshops. There was one workshop on forestry at the Organization of American States. There was another workshop on mahogany. But we realized working in the industry that there needed to be demonstration projects. So we learned about a, one demonstration that was being conducted in the Amazon region of Brazil. It was conducted for uh, Penn State University by a, a, a very well-known forester whose name was Johann Zwied. He was a, an American who was living in Brazil. <clears throat> and they had set up demonstration models, one model of, a, of about 200 acres, 100 hectares, 200 acres, uh, of just traditional logging where the forest is pretty well cleared. And then an adjacent property of the same size, a couple of hundred acres, uh, with best forest management reduced them it's called they called it low impact logging later we changed it to reduced impact logging and it showed that you could do selective harvesting you could re remove only mature trees leave younger trees to grow uh, plan your roads uh, plan the, uh, the the roads for where the tractors and bulldozers uh, uh, logging equipment goes, uh, and then those roads can be used 30 years later, you come back and, and the smaller trees have grown larger and you have a continuous cycle. <clears throat> and that was very impressive. Uh, uh, we, we, we gained the support and attention of, uh, to, to do projects. So we decided to do projects like that <clears throat> with, the, with the first one in Brazil. Uh, and in order to, to verify uh, the, uh, the credibility of, of, of the promotion, uh, the U.S. Forest Service sponsored a cost-benefit study analysis, which proved without question uh, that not only was it less damaging to the forest, but it was more economically feasible. feasible. Actually, the timber industry got better profits because there was less damage and less equipment and, uh, and so it was successful. From that, TFF decided that we should have projects like that in the major timber producing regions. So the first one was established in Brazil. Uh, the director was Mr. Swede, Johann Swede. <clears throat> then one, we established one in Southeast Asia with the office in Indonesia. The director was Art Clausen, Arthur Clausen, who was from Canada. Then there was one in Guyana in South America. The, the director was Godfrey Marshall. And then finally, one in uh, uh, West Africa. And that was done uh, by a company that's called Form International. It was contracted to, to Form International. And the concept, uh, all of these projects were very popular. They led to uh, uh, bringing many, many study groups to see how this process is carried out. And as a result of uh, uh, reduced impact logging, uh, the, the, the concept of how timber should be harvested and exchanged in the trade was developed. Uh, and it led to certification. Uh, there's now forest certification on most of the products in the international trade. Uh, and the source, if it comes from these natural rainforests, uh, is, uh, has had applied these reduced impact logging practices. So uh, the Tropical Forest Foundation existed from 1990 on up. It, it phased out beginning around 
2010 on up until a couple of years, two or three years later, uh, and realizing that the concept had been pretty well established. So uh, during that period, from 1990 to 2015, uh, it was reported that more than 10,000 individuals had received the training in these projects, and the training centers in South America, Africa, and the Asia-Pacific region had impacted over 2.5 million hectares of forests, or about 5 million acres of forest. So without question, <clears throat> the concept of reduced impact harvesting or reduced imp impact logging uh, and and the impetus of the Tropical Forest Foundation established this concept, which is now being carried forward and is, has proven to be a very important contribution. Thank you.